Hi, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today, I'm going to show you guys how to make a leaded glass solar lantern. Uh, if you are a uh, beginner, I would uh, suggest that maybe you check out my first video, how to make a leaded glass solar lantern for beginners. Uh, that'll give you a lot more information than this one has. Uh, it goes over all the types of tools and so forth that you need to make the project. Uh, all the two, other two uh, YouTube uh, videos that I have are called uh, Letting Glass Sun Catchers for Beginners. Both of those are fairly simple if you're just getting started. If you've been doing this for a long time, a lot of this stuff will be uh, real simple for you uh, and you can, uh, you can make this uh, fairly easy. So uh, the first thing we're going to do, we're going to have to determine how big we're going to make this project. It's going to be three-sided, just like the, uh, the first video, so you'll get a chance to uh, uh, you know, see how we did that one. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to get our solar light and our solar panel. Here's our lights. There's 120 of them on here. We're going to put those inside of our uh, solar panels when we get them all done. And here is the solar panel itself. This is a uh, from Amazon, this particular one. Uh, it uh, has uh, two uh, AA NICAD batteries in it. It's charged through the solar panel here on the top. It has a photo cell in it that turns it on automatically when it gets dark. So uh, you have to do nothing with that. On the back, it's got a uh, on-off switch right here. Uh, once that's turned on, you don't have to play with that anymore. Leave it on. Uh, it has to be on to charge the batteries. And then you have a mode switch. The mode switch here, you have an opportunity to uh, change how the lights flash and uh, whether you want them to flash or you want them to stay on the whole time. So anyway, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to have to determine how big we're going to make our panels. And we're going to make three of them. So we'll set this aside for a minute. We're going to take a small plastic T-square here. We're going to set it in here. And we're just going to stake and we're going to make a straight line right here. And then we're going to take our solar panel. I'm going to put it in face down because it has a little lip on here. The little lip on here makes this the widest part of it. So I'm going to set it down here like this. I'm going to put this about an eighth of an inch away from my line on the bottom. I'm going to draw this corner right here. And I'm going to draw this corner right here. And from there, since it's three-sided, this, these are have to be on a 60 degree angle. So if you have some tr triangles around, you may have one like this. This is a 60 degree, has a small indentation here, which happens to be an eighth of an inch, works perfect for us. So we're gonna set our line, set our T-square right on our line. We're gonna run this up right up against the edge here, and then we're gonna go out an eighth of an inch. And we're gonna make a line straight down. And then we're gonna come over on the other side, and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna come right up to the line we're going to move out eighth of an inch and then we're going to come straight up and down so now we have three equal sides here so we'll take a ruler and we'll put it right on point to point right here and it says it's six inches so each of our panels will be six inches wide and I predetermined I'm going to make them eight and one half inches high. So we'll have a panel that looks like this. And up here at the top here, we're gonna put in a solid or opaque glass. Gonna have a break in it right here for the piece of lead. This will be about an inch and a quarter. And what I'm gonna do with that is that will hide our solar light when it's sitting in the top of this, if you can visualize how that would work. So this won't be showing at all on our project. Up here in the right hand corner, we're going to put a hanger right here. So we'll have a hanger on all three of these panels. And then when they go together, they'll go together as a triangle or like uh, like uh, this, like somewhat like this. And uh, we'll get ready to do that a little bit later. But first, we need to build these panels. And so that they're all exactly the same, which is really important. So they'll be the same and they'll be straight. We're going to make a form. And we'll come back on the next little video clip and we'll make this form real quick six inches wide, and then we'll get ready to build our project. Uh, if you watch some of my other videos, I like to do a thing called cut and stack. There's no pattern for this. You could have a pattern if you want to draw one up, but there's no pattern of this. We're just going to start out. We're going to uh, probably put a couple pieces of uh, 
clear glass down this edge right here. And then in here, we're just going to come in here. We're going to fill it in with all kinds of colored glass. And so we'll break them all up wherever they want to go. So anyway, we'll move along as we, uh, as we go on with that. So we'll be back and we'll make our form. All right, we're back. So we're going to get ready to make our form. Uh, I'm going to use some small pieces of wood that we cut. Uh, this is cut from a piece of three quarter inch pine. I just set up my table saw and just run it straight through to uh, rip out some quarter inch strips. These work really well. Uh, as you can see by the shape of them, they've been used for a, a long, long time and they last forever. So they work well. So the first thing we need to do, we need to get a square of some kind. I'm going to use a carpenter square. It looks like this. You may have one of these around. This one is about 65 years old, so I've had it forever. So it goes right up against the backstop. If you don't have a square like this, but you have a just a regular plastic triangle like this, you can use it for the same thing. You just put it up against the backstop and you can line up your piece against this edge right here. But in our case, we have a carpenter square, so we're going to go ahead and do it. This is our header board. So the first piece we're going to put in here, we're going to put it in right here. And we're just going to take some small uh, wire brads and we're just going to take and we're going to take and we're going to tack it right down to our table. So we just put a couple in here. Just enough to hold them down solid. Then we're going to take one of our down pieces right here and we're going to run it right down here. We're going to leave a, leave a little bit of a gap right here because our hanger is going to go right in here and we're going to go ahead and we'll put a piece we'll put a uh, brad right here and we'll keep it held up real tight we want it real we want to be sure that we keep it straight maybe three across here would be enough Okay, now uh, we'll take our square out here. We'll take and we'll turn it around. And we're going to come over to this side here. Push it down here. And that fits nice and tight. We're going to run this other piece in here. And remember, we want it to be six inches. So we can take our ruler here. We can slide this out here. Okay. And then we just take and we'll slide this in until we get to our six inches. There it is right there, six inches from here to here. So that'll be the width. Just like bringing this down here right against there. And we want to push this out against the square. So we'll put our first brad in here. And we'll make sure that we've got it up here. Square. Put one more right in the middle here. All right, so that's perfect. So there should be six up here. It is six right here. So that'll keep it nice and straight. So from there, we'll go ahead and cut some uh, lead cane. We'll use the U cane for this uh, for this outside edge. And uh, so we know that we're going to need. We're going to make it eight and a half high. So we're going to cut those at eight and three quarters. So we have a little bit of overhang here at six inches. So our header will be cut at six inches and we'll go from there. So we'll be back and uh, after we cut some came and uh, we'll get ready to put it in here. Okay, we're back. I cut some lead came to go in here. We cut the U shaped came. Uh, most of you are probably familiar with that. Looks like this. Uh, this one here is uh, 7 30 seconds across the crown here. Uh, if you notice, I've cut the uh, one end of this on a 45 degree angle. Just uh, did that at random. So that's our, that's our uh, side pieces that go up and down. I also took and spread these. And uh, if you remember, if you've gone through my ones that were tools, this small tool right here, I used this to spread this out here. And the reason I did that is some of the lead or some of the glass that we're going to use is quite wide. We're going to use this piece of glass right here, which comes down, which is going to go down the sides here. And uh, this 
glass is quite thick. So if you don't spread them, you won't be able to get the glass in here. So uh, keep that in mind when you're building these things. Depending on what kind of glass you're going to use, you may have to spread your came out just a little bit. So that doesn't always happen, but uh, uh, in this case it does because we're going to use that, that uh, bubbly glass. So anyway, we're going to, I just cut all of them. We have six of them. There'll be two on each, each panel. And I cut all the headers. Here again, these are the ones that are going to go across the top here. These, uh, if you notice, have a notch cut in them right here. This notch that's cut in here, then they're kind of 45 on both ends. Uh, the notch is cut in right here. This is where our hanger is going to go. And I'm going to show you a little trick that I came up with. Used to live in Arizona. We had a lot of wind in Arizona. I was always afraid these things might blow apart if they uh, just had a ring or something soldered on there. So I came up with this idea and uh, I've never had one fail yet. So you might want to give this a try if, you, if you've been looking for a good way to hang things. So to hang things with this, this is what we're going to use. These are 332nd cutter pins. They're steel with the zinc plating on them. And to make these work, I'm going to take a small pair of pliers, set it right in here inside the loop. And I have a small piece of tubing here. It's a brass tubing. It's 330 seconds across the opening here. You're going to slide it down the long side of the leg here. And you just pull it out 90 degrees. And that's all there is to it. I'll do another one here just so you get a, a feel for it. Whatever you do, if you're going to try this, don't buy stainless steel cotter pins because you'll never be able to get them bent. So these are steel, zinc plated. You can get these at uh, the hardware store. You can get them on online. These are these were purchased online. And what we're going to do with these, I'll show you here in a second. They're going to go behind the lead came. And our header glass now, I already pre-cut this. If you notice right here, I've notched back a section of it on my grinder. Uh, so this leg is going to sit in here like that. So if you can imagine, this is going to run down the side there. If you imagine with the lead going across the top of this, and this will be soldered right around here, uh, it'd be very difficult for that to come out of there. So uh, if you don't have a grinder, you can always do this. Like if your, ed your edge is going to be straight, take one of your cotter pins, make it a sacrifice one, cut this in about four little pieces here, take some white glue and just stick them on here and on here. And the reason you want to do that, you want to keep this spaced away from your, your header, header here uh, so that it'll all be straight. If you don't do that, your job will start off crooked. And then when you start to build, it gets worse as you go down. So what we're going to do, we're going to take and we're going to set in our first side piece here. And then we're going to take our this one here with the notch in it. I'm going to run it in here right up there, just like that. Take it out. And then I'm going to take it, I'm going to insert this right like that. But before I do that, I forgot to tell you something. Because these, these pins are... Uh, are three thirty seconds by an inch and a half long. When they're sitting, when they're sitting in here, they stick down below this right here, and we don't want to do that because when we start to put our lead in here, we won't have any. It'll interfere with our lead, so we don't want to do that. So I'm just going to take a pair of long nose pliers here, and I'm going to cut this tail off here just a little bit. So we're just taking to cut that off. So now, when this is sitting in here, you'll see that it'll be shorter. Now it's below that, so it won't interfere with us. So I'm going to take this, going to insert it right here. It goes inside here. I'm going to take a pin. I use a, a push pins for for my. You probably see a lot of people using uh, horseshoe nails and all kinds of things to hold hold their things tight. Uh, I'm even a, using a homosote board, so these push pins work very well. If you're not familiar with these. They have an aluminum top on them. They have a 5 8 inch steel pin and uh, they last forever. I've had these forever. So then the other piece of U came right here is going to come down this side. It's going to go right into our 45. Now these 45s, 
uh, they're just cut by eyeball. Uh, if there's a little bit of a gap in it, don't worry about it because when we get ready to solder it, unless you've got a great big gap there, uh, the solder will help you hide that. And from here, we're going to take our header piece here. We slip it into our, our U-came here and bring it down. Take your pin and move it over behind it here. Over behind it. Move it on down. Take this pin out. Push it all the way in. And if you're afraid that that might back out on you, if you've got some old U-came, just take an old piece of it here, stick it in here. You don't want to put your pins right against the glass because you'll chip it. So just take and push that in just exactly like that. And that's all there is to it. From here, we'll put our H came across here, and then we'll cut our pieces to go in here. We'll run some H came down here, and uh, we'll get ready to go uh, to fill in the center of here. So I'll come back on the next video, and we'll start to put the H came and the side pieces in here, and then we'll fill this in. All right, back. So uh, I got the uh, piece of H came across our header right here, and I got our first piece of down glass right here. Uh, when I was looking at this glass, I didn't think too much about it, but this is architectural glass. It's about 3 sixteenths of an inch thick. Mostly art glass is uh, 3 millimeter or 8 inch thick. So this one here, I don't know if you'll be able to see this or not, but I took it at, on about a 60 degree angle and I ground a little bit off the face of this so that it'll go into our came a little bit easier. Uh, normally, uh, this, is a, this would be used in a, thick, in a job with larger came or in this case, remember we spread the we spread the outside edges open, so it's going to go right in here. So we're going to set it in here, and we're going to slide it in, and we want to be sure it goes all the way down. Then we're going to need to cut a piece of of uh, H came to go in here, and so I'm going to take a little piece of uh, U came and stick it right here, and that's going to tell me. How long to cut this H came? Because that's what's going to be. That's what we're going to finish this up all across the back here with a piece of U came. So this might work right here. That's just a little bit too long. So we're just going to do a flat side in. We'll just trim a little bit off. And I can do both of these at the same time, so we don't have to take them. It's really, really close. And what that'll do, that'll let our U came go all the way across the back and close that off so we'll have a nice looking job. Okay, and so now we got this one cut over here. We'll put this one over here. And uh, we'll put a couple pins in here. Now we talked about the cut and stack idea. Here again, you notice there's no pattern in the middle here. There's nothing. So we're free, we're free to do anything we want to in here. Uh, you could draw a pattern and you could do whatever you wanted to if you wanted to design in it or something like if you wanted to put a cross in here or whatever you wanted to put in there, uh, it would be up to you. In our case, we're going to go at random and we've got some pieces of glass here. We're going to take here. We want there again. We want to put the pretty side up. That's this side on this one. We'll stick that in right here and we'll take and we'll cut a piece of <clears throat> H came to go in here. Here again, we got to cut the points off. And when you cut this, remember you're going to cut it back about a sixteenth of an inch shorter than the actual glass because uh, we're going to have to run a piece of H came down the side there. So we're just going to cut that like that. We'll cut it flat side to flat side. Stick that in there like that. Just like that. Uh, we're going to take another piece. This is a ripple glass. It's got a ripple on the top side that'll be facing up. Let's we'll stick it in there like that. And we can take and we can cut a piece of H came on that one. Here again, we'll just run it down here like that. Here again, we'll cut it about a sixteenth of an inch short. So we'll go from there. So that goes right in there like that. Put a pin in here to hold it. Okay, so we're going to go off camera here rather than watch me fill this all in. Uh, you get the idea. 
Uh, we're going to uh, just randomly mix this. We may have some long pieces, some short pieces, some narrow ones, some wide ones. So you can do anything you want to in here. We do want to end even with these two pieces of side glass. That's going to be the length of our project. We'll come back to this one right here. You notice I've got a line drawn down here. Uh, I want to put a piece of came down here, but you notice we left this as one piece of glass. I'll show you a little trick how we're going to fill that in. Uh, I like to put it in there. First of all, I don't like to have this big piece of glass with nothing in it. And second of all, by putting in a piece across here to help strengthen this corner right here. And of course, this is where our hanger's at. So our, our, the leg of our cotter pin is going back underneath here. It's about to right there. So that'll help strengthen that area. So when we come back, uh, we'll have this all filled in. We'll get ready and we'll put the last piece of you came across the bottom there and then we'll get ready to solder it up and then we'll go on to the next video all right we're back uh, we've got our first panel all filled in and so now we need to put a, a piece of you came across the back here and uh, so we'll just take our uh, you came right here that's the one that looks like the shape the letter u and we'll set it in here and we'll just take and measure it that one will almost work. This needs to be trimmed just a little bit. So we'll take our cutters, flat side in. Now remember, we're using this architectural glass on the outside, so it's pretty thick. So we need to spread this open. So we're going to take our little tool here. And we're going to run it right through here to open that up just a little bit. Like that. Remember, I told you when you run that through there, sometimes it makes it a little crooked, so you want to straighten it back up. So we'll set that in here. Put that in right like that. I have a little piece of our form wood here that fits right in here. So we'll take our uh, hammer and very lightly, don't get too strong on this because you don't want to break some of your glass. We're just going to tap this all down nice and straight. Because we're going to make three of these panels and we want them all the same size we're going to take our little t-square again we're going to come back in here and we're going to line it up on here and we're going to be sure that it's square and it's right where we want it right there so we'll take a couple pins we'll take and pin this down just like that all right Get our hammer out of the way. Get the square out of the way. So this is our panel right here. Now, we talked about this area right here. I said I didn't like this big piece of glass with no breaks in it. So we didn't cut this in two, so we can't put a piece of came in there. But so what we're going to do, we're going to take a piece of H came. Here again, this this one right here. And we're going to measure it to fit in here. Right there. Here again, we're going to take flat side against this. Then we're going to come in here with our cutters and we're going to cut the heart out of it. So now we just have the crown part of it. And sometimes if there's a little bit of left over here, you want to maybe just take your cutters and go across it real quick. Make sure it's not going to have any real high spots on it. Just like that. Now that's going to sit right in here. And we're going to need uh, going to need to trim it just a little bit. And when you do this, if you want it, you want it to fit in there tight, so trim it just a little bit at a time. So when it pushes in here, that's still a little bit too long. If you accidentally trim it just a little bit too far, just take a little bit of white glue, put a couple little dabs right here, and just stick it down and wait about five minutes, and then you go ahead and solder it in. Okay, so that's pretty good. That's what we want right here. We'll just get it straightened up. Take our little block of wood and give us a little helper here. Okay, very good. That's what we want right there. I do that for a couple of reasons. One, I don't like I said, I don't like that big piece of glass going all the way across here without without some kind of a, a break in it. And the other thing is 
Remember our hanger right here. Here's our cotter pin right here. So it's got one leg running down here, but it's also got one leg running across, which stops about right here. So that helps strengthen this whole quarter, corner. So now what we're going to do, we're going to get ready to solder this. So uh, I got my soldering iron out. I got it plugged in already. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take and I'm going to knock any oxidation off the lead. And I just use a small stainless steel brush. Looks like this one right here. And I'm going to knock that off. So shine up the, uh, the joints. Uh, if the lead's brand new, you probably don't need to do this. If the lead's been sitting around out in the exposed open air, uh, sometimes it creates a problem. It starts to oxidize. And when you get ready to solder, it won't solder very well. Uh, the solder doesn't want to flow. And uh, you'll get some kind of a gobby looking uh, uh, solder joints. So now we're going to take our flux. I'm using a liquid flux here. This one here uh, doesn't smoke. It's water soluble. So I'm just going to go over all the joints. Just add a little bit of solder to our little uh, flux to them here. If you don't put the flux on them, when you get ready to solder, you'll notice the solder won't flow at all. It just kind of stays on top of the lead. And uh, so you don't want to do that. So this glass was just put in here at random. You can do anything you want to. You could actually put a design in here or do something like that. But we're we're doing the cut and stack idea, uh, so it has no it has no pattern to it. So we're gonna we're going to just move them and move all of them around as we uh, as we mix them up. Uh, when I solder, I usually like to take uh, maybe an eight to twelve inch length of solder, and uh, I just cut it off the roll. I'm using a 60-40 uh, solder. I like that, it flows nice. Uh, when the roll starts to get down low like this, uh, you can just pull it off and solder and hold the roll. But when it's uh, completely full, it weighs a whole pound. And that doesn't sound like a lot until you start to do a big panel and then all of a sudden it gets pretty heavy. So anyway, I just like to cut it into a strip like this. I'm uh, gonna have a little sponge on my soldering holder. Uh, I'm using the, uh, this is the iron we talked about in the other videos. It's a Waller 100 watt. I like it because the tip itself dictates how hot it is. This is a 700 degree tip. Uh, this tip is just perfect for the uh, 6040 solder. And uh, uh, be sure that you uh, just tint it just a little bit with a solder. Just a little bit. Take and wipe it off. I always test it against a piece of cane, make sure that it's not too hot so I don't melt my cane. Because uh, the first thing you want to do, you don't want to put down your first solder joint and have it uh, melt. So we just put a little solder here. I like to hold this flat on there. Just pull it straight down and just walk away from it. Don't linger on it too long because you'll burn your lead. And also, you don't need to be moving around on it. Just go straight down on it like that. Here's a little cheater that we put in there. So this, uh, just go through here and we'll solder all of these up. By keeping the solder down flat like that, you don't have a, you can, can kind of control the bead. I like to kind of make the beads all the same if I can. Uh, takes about a, uh, just a sixteenth of an inch of the end of the solder to make them come out all about the same. If you have one that you don't like, uh, you can kind of go over again. There's one with a little bit of a gap in it. Right here, you're going to need a little bit bigger piece of solder because there's have a, we have four coming together here. There we go. That's what we want. After you solder for a while, you get the hang of it. And uh, the only thing I can suggest on the solder is find a system that works for you practice 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 I don't know if there's a 
right way or a wrong way to solder. Whatever works for you and whatever you have success with works out just fine. Okay, after we get all the solder joints done, go over your project. Make sure we got everybody soldered down. I usually just take a, a cloth or an old, this is an old washcloth, and I kind of knock off all the excess flux that I put on here. And uh, then what we're going to do, we're going to turn this over and solder the other side. And uh, so I'll go off camera and do that. No use to watching me solder it. You get the hang of the solder idea. And But there is a few things on the other side that we're going to do that you need to know how to do. So uh, we'll come back on the next little video and uh, we'll show you what, how to finish up the back side. Okay, we're back. So I got the back side soldered. Now you'll notice if you look really close, there's a couple things we didn't do. One... Down the sides here, we didn't solder any of these. And there's a reason for that because we're going to, this is three sided. So the other side is going to go, if you can picture this, it's going to go on an angle like this. If you solder these and you get a little glob of solder on here, you're going to get a bubble or it's going to push it away from each other and it'll make it go curvy. So we don't want to do that. The other thing we need to do, we need to put a little cleat across the top here. Otherwise, we need some something to put it put a rest our shelf on to hold our solar panel. So the way we're going to do that, we're going to take our panel. As you can see, that's going to look real nice here. Uh, we're going to take our panel and we're going to set it here. I'll set it sideways so you kind of get a view of this. We're going to just take a piece of uh, HK, small piece, and I have a pair of medical tweezers here that close up and and will hold this. So. If you don't have something like this, uh, if you've got an uh, a alligator clip that they use for electronics or uh, you've got somebody that can give you a hand, you can, they can hold this while you solder it. So anyway, you want to take and put a little bit of flux right across the top here. I didn't, I didn't solder these two because they're going to be behind. If I solder them before I put my cleat on here, the cleat's going to be all wiggly, so I don't want to do that. So... I'm going to set the cleat in here, and this here, you don't have to really measure this. Just do this by eye. I'm going to set it in here like this. I'm going to take my tweezers. Just pull it down, and it has a little clip that snaps in. And it sits there just like this. I don't know. Hopefully you can see this. Let me look in the camera. Yeah. Let me move this down here a little bit further so you can see what we're doing here. Okay. So now I've got the cleat in here. It's right against this top piece. I'm going to take my soldering iron, and if you can see it, the soldering iron, the tip, still has a little bubble of solder on it. So that's perfect. I'm going to just set it down here between the two pieces of came, and I'm going to hold it here, and we'll let the solder flow off the tip and solder these right here. Okay, after it gets just soldered just a little bit, I'm going to take my clips off. I'm going to take my solder. And I'm going to just take and put it between the two pieces of came here. And I'm just going to run it around here. Now, earlier I told you don't move the solder and iron. Well, in this case, we're going to move it here. I'm going to just move it right along here. You can just probably spot solder this if you wanted to. I always usually fill it in here. Okay. So now we've got our cleat on here. On the back side here now, if you want to, you can take and put a little more flux on it right here. And just take your solder on, a, on the point here, stick it in here, and you can solder these two up if you want to. You don't really need to do that, but uh, if you like to want to finish it up. So we're going to do that. And then, because uh, these edges are sharp right here, right here, I'm going to take this on a 45, and I'm going to cut this just a little bit here to cut these back. Just like that. So that's a cleat. So that's where, that's so when these are all together, we'll have three of these. There'll be one in each panel. We'll put our, our, support on here and then our solar light will sit on top of that so it doesn't fall through into our project. So we left these intentionally long here. 
Uh, there's a couple things you can do. One, you could just cut them off and leave this open. Uh, two, you could cut it off and try to solder it together. Uh, I'm going to show you a little trick here how to fill those in real easy. Take, take your cutters smooth side down, cut it about a quarter of an inch long, and now take and come into this into the side of the U shape here and cut the edge. And then right here, take and cut the cut these back to make a point. And then take the point down on your work table and just roll it over. And then if you look here real close, you can see that it's closed this up for us. So when we get ready to solder that, we won't have a big gap that we're going to do there. And now after you soldered, you got a couple options too. One, you can go ahead and you can leave it just soldered, which is fine. Or you're going to do what we're going to do. We're going to take and we're going to run it over some 80 grit sandpaper and knock it down completely smooth. Uh, in a couple days, it will oxidize, or not a couple days, maybe a couple weeks, it'll oxidize back and it'll never look like that you did anything to it. So we'll roll that point over. Just kind of push them down real tight. Now I'm going to use a uh, drill vise. You may not have one of these. Uh, you can use a, uh, if you've got a couple of bricks, if bricks out of the yard, you can use that. Anything you can use to hold this up straight. So my drill vise looks like this. I've had this for a long, long time. I'm going to set it right in here. So this is going to be like a third hand. We're going to set this right. Let's move this over here so everybody can see it. And we're going to put just a little pressure on here. We're not going to put enough on there to break our glass. So we want to hold it up for us. I'm going to just take and brush this a little bit. We don't really, that's probably not necessary for this. And we're going to just take and we're going to put just a little bit of solder right there. And a little bit of solder right here. And we're just going to take our soldering on, our, on its edge. Just let it go just like that. Just like that. Now you could probably leave those like that. They don't look that bad. We're going to, like I said, we're going to go off camera and we're going to put those on a piece of sandpaper and we're going to knock them down. But we've got one more thing we want to do before we quit uh, soldering. We're going to turn this over. And if you can see right here, here's the, here's the edge where the triangle came together, our 45s. I'm going to set this on a little bit of an angle. I'll move this back here a little bit so everybody can see. A little bit of an angle. And we're going to brush both sides of this. Here's where our, our hanger's at. And we're going to put a little bit of flux right here on the corner. We're going to come down to our hanger and put a little bit of flux around our hanger. Then we're going to take our siren iron here again and we're just going to close this up. Just like that. And then over here, I'm going to push this over a little bit more so you can really see it. Over here, we're just going to set our iron on its angle. We're going to put a little solder on it. And we're just going to let it sit there until it flows away into the crack, right? Just like that. I'm going to turn it over. Set this on an angle again. Clean the tip off. We're going to put a little bit of solder on our iron. I'm just going to hold it right here until it flows off. There. And that's all there is to that. Okay, so I'm going to go offline. We're going to clean this up. And I've got one more thing to do to the panel. And then we're done with that. We'll go ahead offline. We'll build two more panels for it. And then we'll come back and we'll put it all together. And the project will be close to being finished. So I'll be right back. All right, we're back. So we got it all cleaned up. Here's our corners now. We've taken, we've filled them in. And we've taken, just kind of chamfered the edges a little bit. Here's our hanger. You can see that that looks really nice all up. Uh, tucked in there real nice and tight. It's going to take a lot to get that out. Remember that one leg runs back in here about this far. So um, that's going to work fine. Here's the two bottom sides right here. Okay, so this panel is almost done. We've got one more thing to do. And it's going to be done on the back side here. Right here, you see I've marked a little mark. This is the middle of this panel. This panel is six inches wide, so that's at three inches. And what we're going to do there, we're going to put a little shelf on there. 
and uh, that shelf will hold a bottom in this because we're going to stuff this full of 120 twinkle lights. We need some way to keep them from falling out the bottom. So we're going to put a little shelf in here and then we're going to cut a piece of glass to fit in here to create a bottom on it. So to do that, we're going to set it down against our form right here. And our shelf is going to be made out of a piece of small galvanized tin. Uh, this is bought at uh, like Home Depot. Uh, you find it over in the uh, section there where they have all the galvanized venting and piping and things like that. And it comes in a little sheet. It's about six inches by uh, maybe, uh, oh, maybe eight inches, six by eight. And it's very, very thin and it works perfect for what we want to do because we just wanted something to rest our bottom a piece on. So we're going to take this and we're going to set it in here, right here, up against the center. We're just going to eyeball the center there. But before we solder it, we're going to take our, our marker and we're going to mark right along the came here. And then we're going to raise it up about an eighth of an inch because if you remember, we're using a rounded came. If you just push it down there and solder it down at the bottom, it's going to have a sharp edge sticking out that we don't want. So we're going to take our little piece of form wood. Hopefully it's still in the camera here. Uh, it's going to go off the camera. So anyway, put that in there and we're going to push some pressure against this to hold that. Right here now, we're going to take our flux. So I'm going to counterdict myself after I said, don't take and move your soldering iron all around when you're ironing. Uh, we're going to do exactly that. We're going to take our solder. We're going to take our iron. I'm going to put some solder on it right here. I'm going to hold it right against the angle here and I'm going to let it flow. Then I'm going to put some more solder and I'm just going to move this right along the here. Just like that. Okay, that makes that panel complete. I'm going to take our pins out here. Take our backstop off. Take and wipe that area down just a little bit. And I'll show you what that looks like. So here's our cleat now for our, to, our shelf to hold that. On the back side, you can see we dropped it down below where the, where the curve is right here. So now it's not going to have a sharp edge showing. So I'll go ahead and offline, I'll go ahead and make two more panels. They'll be all mixed up similar to this one. And then when we get back, we'll get ready to put it in our, uh, our little form and we'll uh, finish the project up. So hopefully you follow along so far and uh, are uh, going to give this a try. All right, we're back. We've got all three panels done. Now what we're going to do, we're going to put them together. And so I'll show you how I, how I do that. I've made a small fixture here and I'll show you what that looks like in just a second. Okay, well here's the fixture that I made. Basically what it is, it's just set at uh, 60 degrees on right, right, right side, left side. Has two of them and they're lined up together. So our panels will lay in here on the sides. Has some little stops here at the bottom so that they just kiss each other when they're together. Has a backstop on it. And it has a hole drilled in the back here so that the cotter pin for our hanger can slide back so that we line everything up here at the top. And then we go ahead and we take and uh, solder it up. So it looks, it looks like this is what it looks like when you look at it on the side. Uh, you don't have to have one of these or you don't have to make one of these. You can put these together freehand. It's a lot harder. And uh, I've done it uh, before, but I started to make a lot of these. And uh, I thought there must be a better way to hold it. So this is just a fixture uh, to hold it in place. And uh, I've made some great big ones. I have a bigger one than this that holds one that's about uh, uh, twice this big. So you, you just take and cut some 60 degree slots in, the, in some wood. Put a little stop in it so it goes down to where they just kiss each other at the point. And uh, you can go ahead and uh, put it together. All right, I moved the camera down now. So now we're going to solder this second side. And so we want to come in here. We want to flux this up. And the easiest way to do this is we're going to take our solder and we're going to unroll it about 12 or 13 inches out. And we're going to come through the back side and we're just going to take our soldering iron. And we're going to hold it right here.
And we're going to make a solder joint. And we'll come down inside. We'll make another solder joint. And then we'll go all the way down the end. And we'll make one more solder joint. Okay, so we got two sides together. Now what we'll do is we'll take it and we'll rotate it one more time. Put it back into our fixture. Make sure it's lined up where we want it. And as you make these, you'll see that why it's important that they're all square and the same length so that they come out nice and clean on the edges here. So we'll go ahead and we'll put our flux in here. Come back here. Here again, we're going to run our solder down. Put it on your iron. Let it flow. Come on down to the end. We'll put one more down right here at the end. Okay. Now down here at the ends here, I talked about that before. I like to fill those in. So we'll... We'll come back down and we'll do that. I didn't do that on the other side because uh, I'm trying to move this along, but let's go ahead and do that. So I just like to let this flow in here. Just like that. Let's turn this back and we'll do the other one too. Anyway, the fixture just holds this for us. Uh, like I said, you can do these by hand. Uh, I've, I've done it before when I first started making these, uh, but it's a lot harder and it's harder to get them to line up nice and square. So anyway, that's all there is to doing to put it together. And this is why it's important that they're square. See the edges here, how nice and straight they are. They have no solder coming through them. And uh, that's what you, that's what, that, that's the end result you're looking for right here. Nice and square. Okay, so when we come back, we're going to put a bottom in it, and we'll put a top in it, and we'll stuff it full of lights, and we'll be done with the project. All right, we're back. We've got our solar lantern all stuffed. It's got 120 twinkle lights stuffed down inside of it. Uh, if you remember from the start of the video, this is the, this is the solar panel that we're using. It has a, a, a bundle of uh, wire that uh, it has uh, 120 little lights all on it, and... Uh, this can be a handful sometimes when you're trying to stuff those in there because uh, some of these get all wrapped up or all wound up. So just to use a little patience when you do it. On the back side of this, it has the on-off switch and the mode switch. The mode switch switches from a whole bunch of different things, from some of them dimming down to flashing to all kinds of things. Or you can just leave them so they're on solid. So for our demonstration today, we're just going to leave it on solid now. So the last thing we need to do, we need to put our chain on it. This is a uh, the chain I'm going to use. It's a 16-gauge uh, uh, jack chain. It's made by Campbell. I use a couple split rings here. Uh, this one here is about 5 eighths of an inch inside. This one here is a half an inch inside. And it uses a stainless steel ball bearing swivel on it. So the, the chain itself is a, uh, an open loop chain, meaning that, uh, see if I can show it to you here. You can just take a pair of long nose pliers and you can open it up here. We'll come over here where it's where it's white and you can see it here. So that's going to just go right in here in our hanger. I'm just going to hold it up. I'm going to take a pair of long nose pliers and I'm just going to close it up. I'm not going to crush it. I'm just going to close it up. Then I'm going to come over here on this other side here. Here again with the open loop. Stick it right in there. Take my long nose pliers. Close it up. And we'll take the one that's in the middle here. And we'll go over to this outside edge here again. The loop open. Put it in here. Take our long nose pliers and just close it up. We're not going to crush it. All right, there we go. So uh, we're going to take this into the house and uh, make it go dark and we'll uh, show
show you how it looks all lit up. Uh, I also took it and uh, washed it all down so you can see how shiny and nice it is. Uh, I just used a Dove dishwasher, dishwashing soap, just a couple little drops in a bucket of water and scrub it down real good and then wipe it off. So we'll come back uh, and we're going to go in the laundry room. We're going to turn the lights out, which makes the solar light thinks it's gone dark. And we'll go ahead and uh, show you what that's going to look like. All right, here's our project. It's all done and we got it hanging in the laundry room. So uh, this is what it's going to look like when it gets dark. So this has been a fun project to work with. I hope you guys will give it a try and uh, enjoy the video. Thank you for watching.